manteniendo tu cabello limpio, sedoso y... No idea at all what life is like for everyday folks like us all. And they swoop on in with their regulations and their certificates. No, no one tell me what I can or can't do. Least of all, no government type. And uh, white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. Until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Well, if I may, uh, the reason I keep bringing up this this hybrid uh, creature uh, is the uh, the wider relevance, um, and it is relevant. Uh, specifically in terms of and currently sterilization is a huge issue at the moment and, and not just with rarer animals but with all sorts of uh, livestock and uh, and game which you only have I chosen of all of the families of the earth therefore I will punish you for all your sins Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Does a lion roar in the thicket when it has no prey? Does it growl in its den when it has caught nothing? Does a bird swoop down to a trap on the ground when no bait is there? Does a trap spring up from the ground if it has not caught anything? When a trumpet sounds in a city, do not the people tremble? When disaster comes to a city, has not the Lord caused it? Surely, the Sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. The Lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Sovereign Lord has... Had enough of that. We have enough of our own troubles. Thank you very much, sir. Now, this afternoon, I'm off out for a hunt. It's been uh, quite a while since I harvested me a nice white tail. Wish me luck, won't you, listeners? Speak soon. And just as evil was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. You serpents... You brood of vipers, how will you escape the sins of hell? The Apocalypse Players present Highway of Blood. A Call of Cthulhu scenario by Alex Biot, Ian Christensen, and DeVay Brian Jackson. With Dan Wheeler. As Quincy J. Lafitte. Dominic Allen as Edward Ed Mooney. Joseph Chance as Beverly Jack Carstairs. And Dana McAleer as the Keeper of Arcane Law. This is based on a true story. Testing the waters. tamaño y forma. Atención especial. Yeah, so we'll say like. Because we were getting a bit mired towards the end, obviously, geographically last time, but you were basically, you'd come up the main street, you'd pass Ridge Road on your right. The alien who resides with you shall be to... You've got to Hackett Road, and you're about to turn up Steel Road, because it looks like that's the sort of director's route up into the hills. You as a citizen among you, you shall love the alien as yourself, for you were... A figure walks out. Pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And Hell followed with him. I'm alright there, Ed. You alright there? 
actually feel my hand shaking like what the fuck's going on. <laughs> my hand's on the door. Oh my. <laughs> Can't believe you'd have to ask me that. I can't believe my eyes. I thought you were long dead. I, uh, I caught the gun. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little Where do you want to spill the beans then? Oh, over yonder? There's a lot of folks who'd love to meet you. Oh, just love it. No, no, come on. Come on. I'll direct you. You, you look like you do with a feed. All three of you. I, uh, I, Ed? Oh, um, these are my colleagues. Uh, um, this is uh, Jack Carstairs and uh, Quincy Lafitte. Uh, gentlemen, oh, this is, um... Pleased to meet you. This is my old mentor and, uh... And friend, uh, Jacob Blackwood. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, i got to say, uh, really thought you were dead. <laughs> well, I thought you might be as well. I'm glad to see I was wrong. So, shall I take you down to the uh, the tents, or...? The tents? Yes, Plural. be cooler down there. Plural, you say? Hmm. You got a, you got a whole crew up here with you? <laughs> oh, yes, you could say that. Uh, come on, I'll, I'll scooch in the back and I'll wait, direct Wait a minute, what, what do you mean we could say that? Well, uh... You got a crew yes. up here or not? Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever thought of them as a crew, but, uh... Who, are they like dogs? We have a flock. Uh, no, not so much. More lambs, <laughs> I suppose. But we can talk about that. A flock of lambs? Sounds like you're running some kind of cult up here. <laughs> oh, no. I, uh... It's nothing quite that exciting, I'm afraid. Or a small whole farm. Ah, oh, nothing, nothing quite that exciting. Slightly more exciting than a sheep farm, perhaps. But uh, come on, I'll, I'll scooch in the back and uh, I'll give you directions. Uh, you know, you know, Ed. Why don't you come in the front? I'll go in the back. Mind my head. Uh, excuse my head. I took a spanner to it. I was going to ask. Someone, someone threw it at me, and I get out, and I, I get in out. Town. I get out with the shotgun. Hmm. Oh, I see. Uh, you're uh, packing some heat there, buddy. Well, uh, like I say, someone threw a spanner at my head. Uh, and you responded with uh, artillery, I see. No, I well, haven't discharged the weapon. I don't intend to, unless someone throws another spanner at me. Of course, a man's got to defend himself. I'm, I'm sorry to hear you've had trouble. Not Is the, it local um, youths? Or? Yeah, I guess so. I wasn't the only one. Ed took a bit of a blow, too. Anyway, why don't you um, right up front with your your friend, and I'll uh, happily I'll go in the back happily. And I just look at him. I just look at him for a few seconds longer, and I and I have the gun up, but not at him. And I just go, I'll go in the back. And then I just open the door, and I sit there, and I with the shotgun pointed at the chair. Hmm. He he um he clocks all that in quite an affable way, and then sort of gets in the passenger door, closes I'm it. I mean, across my knees, and... not like it's sticking... <laughs> not the at the back, back, of, like, his, but the like... back of his skull. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, he's, he doesn't clock it in a way of, oh, I'm being threatened. He just sort of watches you get in and then gets in and then turns to Ed and say, I have to say, so wonderful to see you again. You'll have to tell me how you've ended up here. The chances, the chances, and he, uh, he, he grips your shoulder... Well, Gives you a, a big squeeze. I got some questions for you, uh, Bob. I mean, oh, I'm sure. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, the last 20 years, I've been in and out of El Paso. I can't count the number of times. I've wandered into the rusty anchor more than, more than one occasion and per trip. And I ain't seen you, hide nor hair of you, since... It was 20 years. Well, I, time was, time was, I couldn't peel you away from that... Those two short planks they call a bar. And, uh, That's right. I was uh, something of a limpet, a barnacle, if you will, but I, I managed to scrape myself off the hull, and, uh, well, I found something better. But uh, I'm sorry to have left you in the lurch. There just didn't seem a way to get in touch. So you've not been back to El Paso since? Not at all, no. It's still there, I take it. Oh, it's still there. Still there. They still got your picture on the wall. Dead or alive, it oh. says. But I think it's, <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Anyway, first right. 
and he sort of gestures for you to carry on up the road and take the first right. Um, what is it? What is this? How is he um, attired? Right, you know, having a look at him, mm. is, does he look like he's um, in like well kept clothes, or does he look like he's been kind of kind of very well kept clothes? They really? sort of look like white sort of linen. But very, you know, he was almost. That's why it was hard to focus on him initially because of the, the intense heat. Yeah, the, just the shining of these these white sort of the white cloth. But um, and he's and we've I come across him in kind of in the middle of nowhere, right? This is like yeah, he just stepped out in front of your car and then seemed to recognise Ed. And if this is just outside town, up where we think you're, you're reaching the outskirts of town. You've passed by like a sort of meat packing plant that looks. De- you know, old and probably not used anymore. There's sort of a pit that looks like a sort of another, you know, uh, what's the term? A tip, basically. And you, you're up closer to the actual rocks and hills of the backbone itself. And he's sort of saying, "Well, let's just take the ride over here." And he mentioned tents. And yeah. What, yeah, but so it really is uh, like obviously it's um, it you know we do, I guess we don't know how shocked Ed is to see him, but he's certainly an unusual mm. sight. For all of us to see in this place. Yes. Great, good. That's I'd say so. I, do you think it would be fair to do a sanity roll, Ed? I'm not sure, because he seems very normal. It's not like... He seems like you remember him. I, I'm thinking maybe it isn't an initial sanity roll, however shocked you are. It's not like... Mm. It depends, I guess, if you didn't it's, know, but know if he you was think, dead. I, yeah, I wasn't no, sure exactly. he was dead. I just assumed he was dead. Um, yeah. In those situations, I always get the players to do a power roll. See, see how they're feeling. Maybe that's good. Maybe it's when he grips you on the shoulder. You sort of... It feels like... It might be it's just the heat, actually. But it's almost like what people talk about with Ray K healing. Um, <laughs> you, you feel like a sort of... A, quite a warm sort of like... Sh- like a, a shiver go through your body. And you're not sure if it's... Because it's so odd being touched by a friend you haven't seen in a couple of decades. Or... Or is the heat getting to you, or just the shock of the moment? But yeah, could you give me a power roll, and we'll see how you deal with that sort of moment of intimacy? It's that moment of electroacupuncture. Mm. My power is extremely low. <clears throat> My sanity is even lower. As is your sanity, I believe. <laughs> yeah. But I've rolled a three. Um, Ooh, dramatic, dramatic freeze. Did I freeze? Yeah. Uh, oh, you rolled a three. Whoa! Oh, ice cool, ice cool in not quite Alice. I think he's buoyed up by the um, by the feeling that we were out of our depth. But here's the man who taught him everything he knows about prospecting. If anyone's yeah, I, even, I might even say out loud actually after he squeezes me on the shoulder, I turn back to the other two in the back and say, "I tell you what, boys, if uh, oh oh, you've yeah. frozen a tad, frozen again. What the fuck? <laughs> it's cliffhanger, cliffhanger stuff. I tell you what, boys." And the car explodes. <laughs> yeah. One of those slow mo and spooks shots. Well, the goddamn internet's gone down. It was not one of us, and it's the other, isn't it? It seems to be taking it in turns. I had a little bit of funny moment. Meanwhile, of course, Jack and uh, Quincy have a telepathic conversation in the back seat while all this is going on. Yeah, that's the thing. I think we're a bit too we're a bit too close quarters for us to. Yeah. Really, <laughs> well, uh, we probably exchange a look. I, I think we. Oh, yeah. he's, he's gone. He's going to come back in. I, I think we. I, when I got into the back, I think I gave you. I gave you big eyes of what the hell is this? Zooms. Yeah. Um, it, regardless of, of of what we know about this guy, and we hadn't heard about him, it seems clear that Mooney's been thrown by this, and Mooney's a cool customer, so it feels... And also, we do know that Mooney was looking for people... Well, he admitted to you that he might be being followed and he had a bit of a shady past, but he seems happy to see this guy, so... Yeah, well, unfortunately, it doesn't, it doesn't really um, sit well with with me regarding Mooney. So I think I'm just trying to kind of gauge... Yeah, well, I had a very dubious, like, opinion of him anyway, following the uh, the bust up in the bar. Yeah, so I think maybe my look to you, Lafitte, is very much one of, what the hell are we going to do about this? And I wouldn't have thought that would take a psychology role, because I'm just kind of going... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> loads of flicking in my eyes back at the two of them and at you... I mean, I don't want to get us into trouble, but maybe maybe we should do power rolls. Because uh, now I'm thinking about it. Maybe maybe Beverly maybe Beverly started to think about that, going... I think Beverly started to think, where the hell was he... Wh- where was he? What was he doing up on this road? 
in the middle of <laughs> yeah in the middle of nowhere. So I'm I, I can't speak for uh, Quincy, who's a cooler customer, I think maybe in some ways, well more, certainly more experienced. Well, mm. I will take a power roll if you feel the need, and if you don't, um, a spot hidden. Uh, if you want to sort of if you're analysing him as a person. I would love to take that opportunity. I feel like I definitely... That's kind yeah. of what I was angling. I think, I think if I pass it, I'll join the Spot Hidden crowd. But if I don't, maybe I'll be a bit panicky. We'll see. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was rolling the wrong dice. Do I want to do a power roll as Why well? Why was I rolling the wrong dice? It doesn't actually matter because it's still, <laughs> still, a, 90, it's still a 91. At least it wasn't a fumble. I'm going to say that I don't think I need to make a power roll. <laughs> you haven't never told me I have to, so I'm not going to... No, no. It's more of a choice if you think you're carrying the wood. I think it's all very fast and it's all very sort of distracted, so... It was it was Jack that actually got out and sort of faced him with the shotgun and had a, more of an interaction, so maybe yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, I think Lafitte know. actually isn't... He's a little bit more analytical rather than mm. emotionally. Oh. Oh, that's just... I've just passed my spot hidden. Just a regular success. So, with the spot hidden, um, I think it's like, because you're in the back seat still, aren't you? Mm. Like, Joseph climbed... Jack climbed up into the front. And he um, he just sort of turns back to you both and sort of gives you a grin. Sort of like a... Nothing sinister, more like a sort of, ooh, road trip. You know? <laughs> um, but you notice a shine around his neck under the linen suit and you see like a sort of a glint of something gold looks sort of triangle shaped hanging at his chest but then he swings back round um, and that's all you see initially but it it strikes you as odd because it seems like a decent bit of bling for someone who's otherwise dressed quite lightly Mm. so you notice that Um, so perhaps the speed of this and the fact that Ed's talking to this guy and he seems to be reassuring you and the guy's sort of forced himself into the car almost it feels and you're suddenly in the back seat again with your gun out and he sort of turns around and flashes the smile I'd like to Maybe I'd like to do a reality fun. check I'd like to do a reality check mm, good I like it I like um, it because I there's just something weird going on in this it could town. be heat stroke you might wake up in a moment and go oh I thought there was someone in the car you know <laughs> like I, I think I look yeah. I look back at I look back at Quincy um, and I sort of narrow my eyes at him. Yeah. Uh, and I say, Jesus Christ. And I see that, Quincy, you're looking at him really carefully and I see I see you're totally focused, but I can't focus and I'm getting a bit scattered and a bit panicky. Mm. And I and I think about my grandfather. Yeah. I think about I think about the painting in the big white house. Back in back in Maine. And maybe you hear his voice just very briefly, very faintly. Oh, yeah, the, the, the that soft New England accent that is so yeah. so so devilishly seductive. And as usual, it's something casual he says to you, something about the football scores or something. Yeah. You know, it's how those mammoths, mammoths doing. Mammoths yeah, uh, tusks up, huh? Tusks up. Tusks up. I hear they've got a new linebacker. Got a new linebacker. His voice just rings slightly. And it seems and as so he weird. Says, Tusks up. You sort of you oh, feel the yeah, shotgun in your hands, up. and you resist the urge to raise it, and and just uh, blow this guy away. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Of course, I fully comprehend the situation with a fifteen on my seventy-five intelligence. Excellent. So, um, you you might be losing something there. Santi roll. <laughs> yeah. Could you do me a, a sequence a D- of failed rolls, essentially, but kind of... I, th- I think that's a D3. A D3? Oh, my God. That was more than I was expecting you to say. Okay. Okay. That's good. Well, you've sold it very well as a moment of panic. So I mean, I, I am panicking. I, I think I'm panicking. With it. Okay, it's three out of six, so there's two. it's two sand loss. I, I have an offer for an involuntary action. But, please. But if you'd like to um, go for something... No, no, no. I mean... Please give me your offer. <laughs> I think I, t- oh, yeah. I think I take mysteries of the Wendigo out of my pocket. I think I do this weird thing where I just shove the shotgun over to you, Quincy, and I go, take it, take it, take it, and I and I get the uh, and I'm scrabbling around my pocket in my jacket, and I get this thing out. Yeah. And I sort of squidge my my bloody rags around my head. No, they're not rags. Mm-hmm. You know what your I mean. Your vest and your tie. So there's a bit of blood, extra blood on my hands, and I get my pen, my pencil out, and I start furiously writing to Quincy. Was, a, a it's, it's wrapped in brown paper, so are you writing... Oh, even better. Yeah, great. I'll take the yeah, yeah. brown paper and I'll... 
I'll rip that off <laughs> and I'll be, yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah. writing on it. And I think I'm being really secretive, but I'm behaving very strangely in this moment. Yeah. And, you know, obviously we're not... I haven't strapped myself in, and I doubt you have either, Quincy. Yeah. Are, are you... No. No. I'm, I'm not even sure the car has seatbelts, so I'll, I'll double-check that. But, uh... So, it certainly doesn't have license plates. As, as you're scribbling so panically, you see Jacob and Ed's eyes both in the rearview mirror, just looking back at you. This guy, what's this guy doing? So now, of course, I look like the mad guy, but but to me, yeah. I feel like I'm the sanest person in the car, and I'm desperate to sure. make sure that Quincy understands. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to write him a note. Great, I love it. Uh, during which time I don't, you can do anything you want, Lafitte, because it's going to take me a few moments. Because I think I'm, I'm going to write it down right now. Oh, well, see, this is all happening in a few split seconds, right? I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I and I sort of I hand you both the pencil and the the rest of the brown paper, crumpling. And I think I'm doing it surreptitiously, but I'm clearly not. There's, uh, it, it's almost exaggerated stealth. Um, and it says. Uh, well, would you read the note? Would you read it, or, or would you just ignore it? <laughs> I think if you pass me a note, I'd definitely read it, yeah. Uh, so, uh, it, the, the, note, the note says, I think this guy, Dash, this Blackwood, Dash, I think he's working with the town, Dash, he's one of them, underscored, Dash. And then it says, what did you see, question mark? Just now, your eyes, I saw that you saw something. And then, and I'm handing you this pencil and this thing, and then I do exaggerated <laughs> looking, and and I and I start nodding to this little mini speech that is happening about and what a great prospector mentor, and just how legitimate this guy is. I am. Um, I just write down. Um, <laughs> I just write three words funny looking necklace as he passes it back I look at him my eyes widen <laughs> come on you motherfucking piece of shit yeah. what the hell are you playing at boy get me the whatsapp oh he's back what's happening he back this is a frustrating situation highly frustrating hey. Ed you've you feel his hand move away from your shoulder. I try and make I try and make eye contact in the rear view mirror with the whoever whoever I can see on the back seat. Just being like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> ah. uh, um, well, I guess you can see um, Quincy because you know, that's left hand drive. You'll be you'll be looking out the back that side more. I, I think maybe you do catch because I'm quite frantic. Maybe I lean over and look at you, wide-eyed, <laughs> and I, you know, and I'm tall as well. So, um, and then I just kind of duck out of your mirror view as if I'm moving too much. <laughs> yeah, and you sort of hit a pothole and he goes, "Oh, <laughs> need to get that look there." And you, <laughs> Jack blows the roof of the car off, and. Uh, Unless you decide to uh, go against his wishes, he just sort of casually points you a couple of directions. You go along the uh, the end of this road and um, you pull out onto a more rough, a sort of uh, dusty sort of dirt track, basically. Um, you immediately see over the brow of a ridge these uh, succession of sort of white tents, very pure white sheets, uh, more like marquees, really, with the, the sides sort of free-flowing. Um, looks very much like a sort of Baptist revivalist sort of setup, I suppose. That would be maybe the what what you'd recognise it as. Mm. How many anyway, tents are we talking? Um, uh, there's only like four, but they're quite big. They're sort of uh, marquee-sized. Uh, three of them are anyway, and there's a smaller one um, at the head. But you are uh, they're kind of like kind of like scout tents. That's what I'm picturing. Like, could people sleep in? Yeah. Them? That sort of thing. It's like it, it obviously provides cover from the elements. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if there was a you know a strong wind, you kind of feel like they might be blown away unless right, they're okay. tethered very strongly. Okay. Um, but from above, and the white obviously would soak up the heat and what well, do the opposite, reflect the heat. Um, yeah. So um, he sort of says uh, as you draw up close, he says, uh, "Just here is fine." Um, Huh. I'll see if uh, I'll see if the reverend's around, but uh, let's get you some water and let's uh, well let's see where we are. 
How, how many, me, sir? Yeah. Oh, I'll go for Forgive it. Give me. I, I was wondering if you you actually had any gas. Oh yes, we've gas. That's fantastic. Well, are you in need? And oh. he looks over. Actually, as you say that, he looks over at the. Uh, <laughs> Not the altimeter, what the fuck am I talking about? But he looks over and says, uh, Ah, you are in need, yes. Um, we have uh, we can top you up here. No need to head back to the garage. Oh, that's the most garage. kind. No no rush. We, we'd obviously love to and enjoy your hospitality. Mm. I, I can see you and our friend here have a lot to catch up on, but, but maybe... Uh, oh, do we? It, before we leave, maybe maybe you remind me to uh, fill up. That's for, And of course, we'll pay. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll get that scene to. Don't worry. And he uh, opens the car door and he says, uh, but time being, let's uh, get into this shade, huh? <laughs> and uh, if you do step out, you're again reminded of just... Uh, I mean, it's about one in the afternoon, I'd say now. Um, and it's baking hot. Like, yeah. you know, you can barely see 200 yards ahead of you without that sort of mirage sheen. Yeah. Um, and you're sort of so. I imagine you'd want to get from shelter to shelter pretty quick. It's yeah. like living in Dubai. I so, I want to say to him like uh, I look around at the tents and I say, uh, well, well, uh, well, Blackwood looks like you got a fair few folks working down here. How many people you got on this? Oh, we got tons. Whole town. Well, most of the whole town. Oh, the whole town, you say? Yeah, only well, mostly, mostly. Because uh, the last I saw you, I mean. Hell, you you were reticent even to work with me, let alone uh, a whole town. <laughs> it's funny how people can change, huh? I'll I uh, I guess I learned a few lessons in my wanderings, but uh, I found home. Yeah, about those home. wanderings. Where exactly did you wander, Jake? Is well, yeah, not as far as you might think, but uh. I went down South America way, I went down Guatemala, Cuba, uh, Mexico, I, I wandered for a while, you know, and then I uh, I found the Reverend Osteen, and, uh, yeah, you know, he just, uh, he has this way of uh, bringing the right things together, and I realized it's what I've been missing the whole time, you know, I ain't no crazy, I ain't gonna try and indoctrinate you, don't worry, I'm just, uh, I'm telling you my truth, you know. So you found Jesus, huh? Yeah, I guess you could say Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna well, I mean, you. listen, I don't know what you believe. Any of you gentlemen, I don't want to push anything on any of you, so I'm being a bit, you know, <laughs> respectful in that regard. Look, and I will respect you. The thing is, what you got here is three scientists, so we're probably coming from a different place than you, but <laughs> I think we can... I look around at the other two, and I... I, I sort of m meet their eyes meaningful, meaningfully, and I say, "I think we can all respect each other's beliefs here. We, we're we're looking forward to that glass of water you promised us. So, uh, oh yeah, let's get into the shade, and we can have a proper sit down catch up." Well, exactly. Uh, you know, whether you go by Fahrenheit or uh, Celsius, either way, you want some H two O. Ha ha! You science types, come on in, and the. Uh, he, it's not necessary because it's flapping in the wind anyway, but he sort of pulls aside a, a sort of a white sheet and ushers you inside mm. the uh, the first tent. So we, I, I was imagining we were still in the car for that one, but we'd all got out of the car, had we? Well, you don't have to have done. That's what he does. He gets out of the car and sort of you're pulled up right next to it and he sort of opens the thing and sort of gestures like a... No, no, great. I'm, I, I want to get out, but I want to put my shotgun in my duffel bag. Yeah, absolutely. You've got time to do that. He's a. Uh, just sling the. He turns yeah. his back as well to open it, so you can do it without. I don't. I'm not hiding. It. I'm not hiding. It. I'm just sticking yeah. it in. Okay. I, I don't want to particularly scare anyone, but I'm just going to put it in no. and have my hand on it, so it's on my shoulder, and it's got like. Yeah. Um, it's got my stuff in, which is not that much stuff. Yeah. It's just and also, stuff. Also, as you all remember, like on the back seat, you've also got. Uh, I think it was Quincy who grabbed it, but like you all grab changes of clothes and you also grab the groundwater testing stuff so that's all also in another hold or on the back seat yeah i just bring my own bag with my um my personal equipment yeah well i think maybe as we look back at it and i i look at you quincy and i say but loud enough for mooney to hear um i say i guess we'll leave the stuff here right i i, I and i say 
overly loud. I say overly loudly. I'm sure everything will be just fine, safe here in a car. Great. That's right. Although, uh, hey, <laughs> when in Rome, feel free to pull up the car, actually, and he starts dragging the cloth back a bit further, and you can see, even in the car, you can see now into the, the tent, and there's, like, sort of rows of, like, maybe ten seats, like wooden chairs, ten, ten a row, sort of facing a sort of little raised area. And he says, uh, you want to drive it on through? Keep it out of the, the heat? Otherwise, it'd be like getting into an oven. Well, no, that's not a bad idea. Sure thing. Sure, pal. Great. I'll follow your lead. You want to do that, Ed, or shall I? Uh, well, I don't mind. Uh, no no bother. Uh, sure. Um, yeah, I, you you would... Uh, well, why don't we... Why don't you and I drive it in together? <laughs> uh, yeah. I look at Quincy nervously. Uh, I think, I think maybe you should, you know, you, you know, Mr. Blackwood, maybe you should stick with Mr. Blackwood. Why don't you, uh, here, why don't you take my bag, Quincy, and I hand over the bag and I, and I give it a little pat. And I, as I, as you do that, I hand over the car keys in my other hand and I lean right in and whisper to you, I don't think we should drink the water. <laughs> and, and I whisper, I whisper back, what the hell was he doing out there in the middle of nowhere? I thought him dead. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well... And if you look up, you see him waving you in like someone waving an airport uh, aeroplane down. Yeah, yeah, sort of nice. Big smile on his face. Landing back in reality. I, I do a big smile back. You're right, Jack. My peripheral vision ain't so good in those tight squeezes. <laughs> no doubt I knock over all those chairs. I remember, he says. Do you, you, you bring the car in, I suppose? I'll I'll get I'll take the keys and I'll, I'll start the cut. I think I do get in, and for a split second I see the the baking heat and the open expanse, and I think about Doc Brenner saying the sands shifting. Yeah. And I think, God damn it, maybe I could just drive. Maybe we should just drive. Yeah. And I and I look at my two colleagues and I don't know, maybe friends, probably colleagues, maybe friends. <laughs> I don't really have many friends. And well, I, they count as friends, then. And I just start to roll in first towards the, uh, mm. the tent. Well, he he holds the cloth back for you and uh, lets you set up just behind the sort of the last row of pews, um, looking at re- re- your rear view, thinking about the drive. Maybe I could, maybe I could escape. You see uh, the sort of dark shape of the town. And you do see that white pinnacle in the middle, which is the uh, that whitewashed, uh, uh, yeah, white church, yeah, uh, the wooden church, which uh, is now between you and Thunderbird Gifts, but the town itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it just sort of sticks up like one good tooth in a bad mouth, you know. Um, but you're not sure if that's the right way of thinking. But either way, you, you pull up, and uh, he sort of slaps on the bonnet, says. Uh, well, that should sort you for now. Now, uh, come on out of there. Let's get you some water. And he, he goes walking off down the middle row of the uh, these wooden sort of... They're like little fold-up wooden uh, chairs laid out like pews. He goes walking out down between them towards uh, the little raised area that you assume must be a sort of altar or a sort of stage of kinds. Um, so there is a moment, if you guys want to sort of have a moment together, he, he gives you some space, basically. In which case... Uh, as he was leaving, I, I wanted to shout and say, Say, you don't got any soda, do you? Uh, soda? Ah, soda sopa. Yeah, we might do. Let me have a look. Or a, or a, or a beer. A beer would be mighty or a, good. Or a Boris. We might have a beer, yeah. Let me go and have a look. Uh, we'll have something. We'll have something. A beer and a soda. And he winks and clicks and says, uh, anything for my friend's friends. And uh, kind. disappears behind the stage. I turn I turn very quickly to Quincy and go, I don't think we should drink the water. I think the water's <laughs> bad. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, I suppose. Well, well, if he drinks it, we could drink it. Do you not see him? Maybe. I think he's hit, touched in the head. I think it might be the water that's made him that way. Well, it might be Jesus has made him that way. What the hell is he sure. doing out there? What was he doing out there in the middle of nowhere? I, I don't know. I, uh, I, it's not so weird that he's out in the middle of nowhere. Like he spent most of his life in the middle of nowhere. It's the it's fact so that damn he's hot. 
It's the middle of somewhere now. That's the problem. It's the middle of us. It's weird that it's here and you're here. But it was on the road, just on the road. There's nothing there. There was no cabin. There was no tent. It's like he knew. What? It would take ten minutes to walk from here. He what the knew. hell was he doing there? He knew. You can, we you can gonna... see that I'm focusing on it, and I don't think it even takes a psychology role to see that I'm really fretting well, about it. fellas, I guess we'd just ask him what we're doing out there by the mines. We could ask. He's wearing a necklace. What? what some kind of... Necklace, right? Yeah, I right, didn't Lafitte. Recognize it, but it, it's some kind of gold triangle thing. Didn't mean nothing. Triangle. To me. triangle. This freaked me the fuck out. I thought he was dead. It's been twenty years. I had seen Say, that guy listen, for twenty years. If he brings us water, then we, we here to test the groundwater. We can ask him if it's from a spring nearby, and we can. Uh, we, I'll get the testing kit out of the back of the car. We'll test it right there in front of him. We've got an excuse to do that. We won't seem suspicious. It's our job. Nice idea, Quince. Why a triangle? I don't know, maybe he likes snooker. Uh, as, as you're saying this, you see his head pop up over the thing and say, uh, well, got your drinks? You want them out here or you want to come back this way? Snooker? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we got a snooker table, everything. I told you, that explains it. I was just saying about your strange triangle and necklace. I said maybe you liked snooker. Oh, <laughs> this whole thing. Yeah, well... Is that is that like pool? He uh, does the bu- uh, one more button up on his shirt, and he says, uh, it's a silly religious thing. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I won't waste your time with it, you scientist types, as you say. But uh, you got your drinks here, and he puts down a tray on the stage, and it's like, there's a couple of glasses of water. There's some, he says, uh, peach-ass tea as well. We do the best here. I know uh, you might have heard that from Robert, but we really do. Uh yeah. Uh, I found your cerveza. Oh, that's great. Say, do you mind telling me, is this water from the, is it local or is it from a bottle? Oh, yeah, 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 from the well. Oh, that's fantastic. We could, I believe we could, if it's all right with all the rest of you, we could kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. I don't know whether that's an offensive term to a religious man, but basically what I no, mean is no, we are here. Not too many birds to out here. Test the, I've noticed, I've noticed. We are here to test the groundwater. Uh, maybe if you don't mind, I'll get the kid out of the car and I could just test a glass of it right here. It saves us a job. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, huh, that'd be mighty interesting. Uh, Thanks. Well, uh, you get your kid out. And, uh, yeah, well, I, I can guarantee that. The uh, the peach ass tea and the, the beer, obviously, they're bottles. So, uh, you know, you could drink them without any fear. Oh, there's uh, no fear. But, uh, it's just yeah. because it's our job. I thought might as well, rather than dig around a dusty old well, I could, you, you pull it up for us. It's just, oh, just in a yeah. glass. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. So I will go to the back of the car and get the testing kit out. So, uh, Ed... <laughs> what have you been up to these years? I'm sorry to ignore you there. Um, <laughs> sorry, what was your name again? He says to you, Jack. Uh, um, Beverly Carstairs. My friends call me Jack. Beverly. Ah, Jack. Well, I'll be your friend if you don't mind. Jack, that's... Uh, 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 sorry to ignore you, but I haven't seen this man in so many years. You're not uh, ignoring me. Ed, you you still knock around with, uh, well, the old crowd? Uh, well... You're still into that... Uh, Contracting? Uh, more or less, yeah. I uh, <clears throat> after the last time I saw you, we I was um, I spent a bit of time, um, you know, prospecting, as it were. Uh, oh yeah. And um, well, shit. I mean, uh, well, the years fly by, don't they? And um, well, prospecting wasn't what it was. That's for sure. And <laughs> I have to say, I got into say that again. A, got into a bit of a tight spot one time. Uh, Realized I'm getting on, but getting too old for going up into the hills on my own. Is that where you got this uh, nasty little uh, line of yours? Uh, well, in a manner of speaking, I suppose. Uh, it was you, uh, it was you, Jake, who got me into that side of the business. And uh, that was one problem, was it got a bit too hot, a bit too hot now and then. Yeah. And, uh, I thought I don't need to wind up with some gangsters laying me cold, and uh, but the real the real thing that kept me out of the hills was yeah the isolation. I suppose you get to a certain age and you realize if I get stuck up here on my own, uh, well Sasquatch ain't giving you no loving, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Sasquatch, all right. 
or something <laughs> else. Well, there's always something else. Anyway, so there's the, always yeah. I went straight. I uh, got into the uh, associated with the uh, Department of Energy here. It's a kind of prospecting, I suppose. Uh, certainly, I know. Well, that's what brings geology. you and your friends down here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, what a happy coincidence. A coincidence I'm so indeed. pleased. <laughs> I'm, I'm EPA, uh, Environmental Protection Agency. But, of course, we, we have a partnership. We work very closely. Yeah, it's a sort yeah. of federal thing. Uh, you know what their suits are like. Mm. When, you, when you say EPA, he sort of salutes in a sort of slightly casual way, but a sort of confused way as in, I'm not sure how to respond to that, but does a little, well, thank you for your service. Beverly smiles broadly at that. These Washington it, suits. It amusing. They send. Uh, you gotta, can't just have one man doing one man's job. You got to have a team of ten, huh? <laughs> you know uh, what it's like. Well, you're not wrong. Yeah. Soldiers of Christ. What? And then uh, I imagine at that point Quincy's coming back with the gear from the the car. Yeah. And as I hear um, this, I just say, Quincy J. Lafitte. I, I I work at um, the university over in Austin. I was just uh, hired for this job. I, I think maybe Jack, you're you're the best place to. Uh, run the tests on this water here. I can see there ain't no bugs in it. That would be my territory. Hey, that's right. You're the bug fella. That's right. They call me the Tiger Moth King. <laughs> Do they now? Do they now? Well, there's only one king around here. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. But uh, you seen anything of interest recently since you've been here? Anything nope. we need to be uh, looking out for? Sadly not. I, I, I haven't really had much of an opportunity to um, snoop around, but... Uh, no, uh, no, I think I guess it's too hot and arid here. Um, I imagine mm. you get no beetles or nothing like that. Hmm. <laughs> when he says that, mm. yeah, do I get the impression that he's uh, that that is a a loaded comment? Do me a psychology. Thank you. Bro. Hoping you'd say that. I um, I, I crack the peach. Iced tea open, mm. um, and and set about getting the uh, getting the equipment ready for a, a quick test. Nice. Oh, cool, okay. My psychology is just the base, but I'm going to do it anyway. Hmm. I mean, why not? Is there anything particularly insectoid about this man? I could do an entomology check. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I mean, the person to ask would really be Ed. Yeah, um, I f- as to what he looks like, I failed my um, my psychology check, so I guess I I I don't infer mm. anything from what he says. So I'd just say, um, you you uh, might have a little sort of thing in your head going, you know, oh that's weird. I was looking for beetles earlier, yeah, and he said beetles, it but it's a coincidence, maybe. Like when you yeah. when you say you'd have to ask Ed, this is a bit meta, but you said you have to ask Ed about what he looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does he look like well, Jacob Blackwood? <laughs> Yeah, he does. My point was really, I don't want to fuck with anything you've put in your backstory. Oh, I see. Uh, right, right, right. No, I haven't, I haven't. If you see what I mean. I haven't said anything about what he looks like or anything. I just said that. Cool. I didn't think you had, but I didn't want to suddenly go, oh, well, he has a long, shocking blonde hair. <laughs> and you're like, no, he was oh, bald. Yeah. He was always bald. Giving us a um, veiled clue there. That's all I meant. <laughs> um, but, but actually, why don't you describe how he looks as he smiles at you across this... Uh, Tented air. Well, he's got waxy skin. He buzzes when he talks. <laughs> um, yeah, sure, sure, sure. His, his carapace sort of rubs together yeah, as he yeah. shuffles along. His <laughs> eyelids sort of close like that way. Well, that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Normal guy. If only he had one pupil in each eye. But... My name is Jacob Blackwood. <laughs> <laughs> um, what am I rolling? Spot hidden. What was I rolling? I don't think you're rolling anything. You were just oh. telling us what he looked like. Oh, right. Um, I've no idea. <clears throat> he can look what, like whatever, I guess. Well, basically, when he asks me about the Beatles, I, um, if, if I don't infer anything from him, I just say, uh, uh, well, now, I, I, I did think I, I might have heard um, Death Watch Beetle up in the, uh, the, uh, the bar up there in town, but, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, but... As I say, it's a bit dry and arid for most m- most insects here. Uh, 
Although, of course, you know, insects can survive in all kinds of climates. I imagine you have a lot of scorpions, other kind of arachnids, maybe the, the tailless whip scorpion. That's one of my favorite insects. Oh, yeah. Say, although I am really a mothman. Not, not like a mothman. <laughs> a mothman. Not, not like the cryptid. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard about that guy. The no, I, big old buttocks on him. That's <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, the old Mothman. I, yeah, we have scorpions up here. I tell you what, the the tail of scorpion that'd be a relief. Uh, most of the scorpions we get up this way, they're tailed, and uh, we get rattlers. I don't know if you're snake people, but uh, yeah, I'd say uh, don't linger too close to any uh, rocks out there. Did you say but, snake uh, people? Anyway. Yeah, I don't know if you're snake people, but we get rattled. Oh, I already told you, I'm a moth man. Fucking <laughs> hell. He's a moth man. I don't know if either of the other is. I <laughs> know. Uh, insects people. give me the creeps more than snakes, I'll be honest, because insects, they're like aliens, ain't they? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. They were here before us, and they'll be here after us. I. Insects. True too. enough. True enough. Cheers. And he, uh, he cracks another peach tea and sort of, uh, Chinks it against uh, Jacks, whether or not you want him to. He does anyway. No, oh, no, I, and, uh, I will. I'll, I'll cheers and I'll. Down. I'm assuming at this point you've sort of you've followed him down towards the stage area at the front. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, cheers, yeah. I, sort of, I was imagining equipment yeah. was slightly on the stage. I'll down that peach. Uh, are there several? Uh, there's like four bottles. Yeah, um, and he has he has a bit of one. You crack one. Um, any, any of the rest of you? Do you want to? Well, you want to test some uh, water, right? Yeah, but I'll, I'll make a, a I'll make a point of literally yeah. downing, like it's a sort of oh, lovely. <laughs> a, hey, you got some thirst on you. I'm not surprised. The boiling heat. You guys must have been uh, you must have been suffering on the way down here. Yeah, this uh, this hat of mine doesn't do much. It was as hot as a. <laughs> oh gosh, it was as hot as a yet. euphemism. <laughs> An Albadillo's asshole. Yeah. <laughs> can be. As hot as, as a date on prom night, right? Anyway, anyone else for a peach ass tea? Ed? Uh, he hands you one. I'll, I'll have the cerveza, I think. I'll, uh, I'll sneak up ah, the ice cold brewski man. there. And um, I, I would take an iced tea and just, I'd, I'm just sort of sipping it, trying to keep. Uh, keep Jacob as as engaged as possible. Uh, although I'm weird, yeah. I am strangely charming. So I, I'm <laughs> just sort of trying to buy... Uh, but Jack. what's your character like? <laughs> Touché. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just trying to buy Jack enough time to... Uh, like to test the water and do anything he does, and, and just trying to keep ja- keep Jacob talking, basically. So, yeah, I'm, I'm having a little sip of yeah. my iced tea. Great. And um, have you got the equipment out, though? Yourself. Yeah, I, all, uh, the whole time, the whole time I've been setting it up. Yeah, excellent. Um, so let's say as as the small talk goes on, you you get to the point where the equipment's ready to test. Um, now, speaking as myself, I'm not an expert in uh, what one would use to test water. I assume it'd be some sort of uh, touch paper thing where you sort of get a level of the pH. And yeah, it's going to be all about the litmus and uh, and yeah, there'll be yeah. some kind of device that you can dip in. Yeah, I, I I will let you know that you do also have uh, Geiger counters and that sort of thing because obviously you knew you were coming to an old. Drive the car so. up, drive the car up, get out the uh, yeah <laughs> twenty eight pound. As a joke, as a joke, <laughs> yeah. while while Carstairs is doing that, as a joke, I snatch up the Geiger counter and go. Well, I gotta say, I gotta say, Blackwood, it's been so long. I I best check. We best test you, huh? And I wave the Geiger counter in his face and be like. Is that really you? I can't believe my eyes sometimes. And he says, it is, yes. <laughs> um, and your Geiger counter almost explodes. <laughs> really? Um, you get a very high reading off the Geiger counter. Christ. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, like, I'm reading that, like, he shouldn't, he shouldn't be alive. He's, he's a sick man. Yeah, you, it, it suddenly starts beeping wildly as soon as you sort of... Wow. That way it does. Well, I think I definitely take a step back from him when I see that. He sort of laughs it off and sort of says, uh, <laughs> well, I knew I shouldn't have gone down those mines earlier. <laughs> yeah, I'll see. It's, uh, you feel it? Always tempting. You feel it all right? Oh, yeah. Oh, It'll just be the dust. It'll just be the dust there. 
Uh, it doesn't do any long-term damage, especially if one's uh, in touch with the Lord. Oh, I suddenly feel like we're in an episode of something from Fallout 3 or something. <laughs> Children of Atom! <laughs> I should uh, change out of these clothes, I suppose. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, startle you fellas. And he immediately takes off all of his clothes. And he's just stood there naked in front of you. And he says, uh, I've got some more back there. Uh, I hope you don't mind. Um, feel free to burn these. I, I think that might be wise. Uh, you, you, yes. you should... Um, You're the scientist. You should try to see a doctor. That's, uh, that's a high dose you got there. Well, funny you should say that. Old Brenner's on his way over. I hope he's bringing sunblock. I pick up the duffel bag and I walk back to the stage with it and I unzip it and I take the shotgun out and I put it next to my equipment. But I don't say anything. Well, let me go and get something on. You don't want to see me naked as the the baby Christ. It doesn't bother me. (laughs) Anyway. Oh, that's the last thing we want. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Quincy. (laughs) And he laughs and he uh, walks around back behind the stage and out the back sort of flap of the tent. Once he's gone, I put the Geiger counter next to his clothes. Does it react? Yeah. Yeah, it reacts quite strongly. Oh. Again. In, maybe it was just the dust on, her clo- on the clothes there, but... He sh- that's, that's not right. Well, n- none of this is right. Maybe if he wasn't down there long, he'll, he'll be all right. Do you want to run that, that counter over the water here? Yeah, I do. I... I I pass it over the water. I, I carry on prepping the test. Um, I'm assuming because you're you, you were well aware that you were heading to an old abandoned uranium mine area. It's mainly radiation that you're looking out for. Although you know, I'll let you know if you sort of find anything else as well. Well, also, I would assume that one was the chemical impurities and the other is obviously so. It's the impurities that would carry the radiation, right? Um, I, yeah. I yeah. thought so. Like, and then I s- there's trace levels of, of minerals in, in it that yeah. are irradiated, if that's the right term. And, mm. and the, the thing that I might be interested in, if there's a, if there's if we've got all the different kit, is that is to see if there's any um, like bi- biological particles, if there's any um, back, any bacteria in it, or so you know there would be we would expect there to be some bacteria in it. Is, is there any, you know, so I guess yeah. those are the sort of things that I, I'm, I know we're asking you quite a lot, but... <laughs> no, no, it's good. I mean, Our chemistry test. I... Well, it depends how we go. Yeah. And also, you guys know me well enough, so uh, do I, do, am I the right man for this job? Because, I, you know, I, I get... I'm, I'm a little bit better than a quarter of the time I'll, I'll get this if I don't have a kit with me. If I've got a kit, I, I guess I get advantages for having the kit. Oh, with the kit, I imagine it's sort of a done deal to a certain extent, as in you can then do it again if you get a sort of an outlandish response. But uh, um, I'm not an expert in how long these things take, but I would say it might take about five minutes to, like, until you're sort of certain. So uh, you do have a moment while you're there with uh, this pile of clothes on the floor in front of the stage, and you do start to hear an engine in the background uh, coming from the way you did I'd like to get my butterfly net out and with the not with the <laughs> net end but with the other end I'd like to ho- like ho- hook the clothes and kind of carry them to the edge of the tent and like throw them out of the tent <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely into the sort of the blazing sun which is so hot you've there's probably a part of you that feels maybe that all sanitized <laughs> I'm not sure that works but <laughs> yeah the, the heat itself will just, just... I just want to get them away from me. What, what, um, what? Just before you fling them, you see a sort of praying mantis sort of rearing up and you fling them on top. It grows six more legs and gets twice as big. So, Ed, you know this guy from the rusty anchor? That's what you said in the car? It's a bit more involved than that, friend. I know Jacob Blackwood. He taught me everything I know about prospecting, about geology, about tracking, about getting up in the hills, about finding minerals and gold and precious gems. He 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 has like a a, a bloodhound's nose, but for for gold, for 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 opportunity too. Not just uh, not just minerals, but gold in a more abstract sense of the word. Useful man to know. We're in a bit of a spot here, so I may as well be frank with you. I've not always been on the right side of the law in this 
in my work. And the man who introduced me to that side of the business was Mr. Blackwood. And I've also got this. And I take out my back pocket, my notebook, which is actually Jacob Blackwood's notebook. This is all I had left of him, this little book here. And uh, I've been carrying this around for two decades trying to decipher his scrawl. And, uh, well, it ain't English, I know that much. I mean, look at this. And I flick through it. And I say, uh, it's all incomprehensible glyphs, shorthand, something. I, I, I've tried to work it out. I've tried to find people who might know what it means. And I've no idea. He's always been touched in the head, I think. Uh, the thing is, you go out there in the hills on your own in bacon heat. You do get addled. I've had my fair share of strange turns and feeling like I've seen things I don't really understand. I know it's all in my head, but, you know, you have to fight your way back to sanity. You have to come back to the rusty anchor, back to town. You have to get back to the people you know and to yourself. You lose yourself out there. And, uh, Twenty years? He may not be actually dead, but he ain't the... He ain't the Jacob Blackwood I knew. And this Osteen, this Reverend Osteen, you, you ever talked about him before? I can't say that he did. Um, I thought, Jack, could you give me a, a power roll? I would love to. My lowest attribute, 45. Sure. And that is a 49. So it's not um, a huge thing, but you, you feel a wave of sort of nausea come over you. And you feel a bit sick suddenly. Um, you feel like you want to sort of get away from the conversation and find someone to throw up. But you might... I mean, you didn't fail by much, so I'd say you sort of keep it down. Um, I think it, but you think maybe it's the heat getting to you. It's, or the radiation. I mean, Fucking hell. Yeah. Or the radiation. Yeah, I mean, that's also an option. You could be like U571 in here in a minute. The, the engine that you all heard earlier, you, you hear getting closer and... Um, if you look back, you see a car sort of coming towards to sort of pull up where you pulled up before. It's sort of an old, uh, an old classic. I think that peach didn't agree with me. That peach iced tea didn't agree with me. I might try and find a, a John. I told you you should have drunk the water. It's not water. It's peach iced tea. Yeah, but it might be made with. It's bottled, to be fair. I, I do. I do look at it. I look at it and sort of see whether it could have been tampered with. Or if it was bottled um, here. I mean, it's a glass bottle with a twist cap. Yeah. It doesn't look like I mean, uh, it'd be easy it's, to tamper it's, with. It's but. to satisfy my sense of having been slightly foolish, really, than anything else. Yeah. But I look nervously at them both and say, look, I'll, I'll wait till this vehicle comes, and then I'll try and find a You, that you did neck yours, of course. Uh, <laughs> but that's another thing. I frantically check um, my but, beer can to see where it was brewed and bottled. <laughs> yeah. And it says, uh, it's like a child's handwriting in red crayon, just says abattoir. <laughs> oh, <I don't> <laughs> and, uh, um, but you do all turn and uh, you see the doctor, the who you met earlier, get out of his car. The peach, the peach iced tea says Bunyan Breweries, Maine. What? Bunyan Breweries. Lobster iced Lobster tea. jerky. It's lobster peach. Uh, lobster schnapps. Lobster Prawn peach. cocktail schnapps. <laughs> Prawn cocktail <laughs> schnapps. Oh. Oh, I, I immediately um, vomit. No, not I'm quite yet. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just about right. holding it down if you're saying that I am. Yeah, basically I'm going to try and find a toilet. That's what I think I'm. you are. Yeah, I think you are just about holding it down, but you just have this wave. You know when you have that mm. wave and you're like, I might need to leave. Mm. Actually, I think I'm Okay. But you're sort of breathing deeply, and um, as you do that, the the doc, Doc Brenner, sort of wanders into the tent and says, uh, Well, hello there, my friends. I see that you've uh, you've met our local reverends taking, taking you in. No luck yet with that tire. I must get on to Russo and uh, make sure he's still uh, focused on the task, as it were. We uh, well, you stuck it. We in haven't arm. met the Reverend yet. We 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 just oh. brought in here. We haven't actually met the good Reverend. Oh, I see. Uh, well, you just found yourself in this place. Oh, a friend of uh, friend of Ed's. Yeah, we we bumped into an old acquaintance of mine, Mister Blackwood. You know him, Mister Blackwood. Mister Blackwood. Oh yes, 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 Mister. Mr. Blackwood, I, 
I've not heard his, uh, well, I've not heard his second name in some time. <laughs> Let's say that. Well, i got to um, say, I ain't seen his face in a long time. It was, I thought I'd seen a ghost. <laughs> well, I haven't seen him for 20 I'm years. Surprised. Is that right? I thought he was dead. But, but he came here just the same as you. Is he asking or... And I suppose there's... Folks might think you were dead. What? I see. What? I suppose there's... Folks might think you were dead. You turn up here, you uh, get used to the locale, the clientele, the the way of living. You might decide to stay here yourself. And then I suppose there's folks who might think you were dead. Well, would we then change our names uh, just like Mr. Blackwood did? Well, uh, did Mr. Blackwood change his name, did he? Or... Uh, well, he's going by the name of, uh, well, and I, l- and I look at him meaningfully, he's going by the name of Jacob now. You said you, you hadn't heard his last name for a while. I hadn't, no, no. I mean, we all on first name basis around here. That's the way these things work. Oh, I see. Is that right, Doc Brenner? That's right. <laughs> That's right, Ed Mooney. Well, he starts walking up to you and lights a little cigar. The moment the says, cigar gets lit, I go, I'm going to have to find a John. <laughs> and I sort of stagger back from right. the smell of anything like... I think wrong. final tent, just the way along there, you'll find a John. Thanks. It's real sorry, Doc. He points you in the way in the way that... Um, with his pinky like that. He points with a pinky, just like you did just then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Big ring on his finger and a cigar. fat cigar. And he sort of... Pinky, pinky points you towards the uh, mm. the latter tent. Why is that so horrible? Because it is. <laughs> and uh, as you as you sort of scooch out, holding your cheeks together, um, he says to the others, uh, "There is the vaser here for me." Oh yeah! And he picks up one that hasn't been opened yet and uh, uncorks it. And can I can I have a look at are these tests showing any results yet? This may be getting that way. Um, what would you expect to see? I think, well, obviously, we'd get pH fairly early. Acid or pH. So it'd be co- a colour. It'd be the colour that it changes, Yeah, I guess. Um, You'd have one of those classic 1975 orange handle, black metal... With the little... Um, s- ...cylinder with a couple of electrodes attached, and you'd stick that in, wouldn't you? And that would run back to the black box with a couple of dials, and that would sort of... They'd, they'd pop around a bit, and then they'd settle their signal. Yeah. And then you could check on the chart... So that would be like on, a... ...on what that might be associated with. So maybe this is the point where... Uh, I'm imagining. You can't tell a huge amount from what you've seen so far, but you get to the point where you're like, well, this is ready, I should take it out, run, and put it in the old... Uh, Ultimator. Yeah, yeah, the shaker. The old, uh, the, the shaker, yeah. the, the maker. To get the um, sediment. Um, well, it would have to be him, because I I, I I am now going to vomit. Yeah. Let's say, Quincy, I, I mean, you've soaked it long enough, you need to go and put it in the little machine thing to see what the right. reading is. And while um, you do that, so I'll, get the, that. I'll get the boiler suits and the backpacks out of the car, ready to, with the traps ready for Slimer. Yeah. So we can catch him. Yeah. Perfect. Don't cross the stream. That's what I want. But I'm, <laughs> but I'm too busy trying to get to that. Surely that's what event. Jack says as he liquid shits himself in the. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the doctor's there and he says, uh, "Oh yeah, uh, you don't want to uh, miss out on that. Get that tested. Get that tested. Stick it on the old device." Uh, so Jacob, he's still around here. He just um, went out the back. Oh, he stepped out the back, did he? I see, I see. I might go and check on him if that's all right. I'll uh, I'll just leave you here for a moment. I'd give him a holler first. He might be in his birthday suit. Oh. And he sort of, at that point, glances over to under the sort of flap where it's blowing along. He sees the sort of pile of clothes and he says, I see. Oh, Jacob, what will we do with you? Jacob, he had a, I'm coming he had through. A heavy dose. He had a heavy dose of the uh, radiation down the mines. I think uh, oh, he, he might need your assistance, to be honest, Doctor. Well, we'll see. Uh, in my experience, uh, radiation is uh, not a bad thing for humans. It's, uh, it's something that can uh, instigate growth, instigate uh, new paths. Um, well, with respect, that's bullshit. <laughs> oh, is that right, Mr. Insectoid? <laughs> well, do do I, tell I'm an me. Entomologist. Entomologist. That's right. 
And how is it bullshit? Well, I... how is it bullshit? Well, I don't know how much you know about science. Have you ever heard of a, a, a young woman called Mary Curie? Uh, I never did, but uh, I can tell you I know a lot about science. I'm a qualified doctor. Radiation, even in small doses, can be really seriously dangerous and cause sickness and in la- larger doses oh, about 10,000 10, millisieverts it almost always results in death and, and let me tell and I lower my voice a bit and I say and the, the level of radiation I saw in your friend Jacob there is perilously close to a fatal dose I see he needs medical attention now he should be in a hospital I see I see I see or maybe there's something else I ain't disregarding what you're saying, but maybe there's something else. Something that brings one closer to the earth, closer to God. Who's to know? But I shall check in on him. You're quite right. You're quite right. Thank you, Quincy. Oh, I think Mary Curie had a pretty good idea about it. Well, I'm sure she did. I'm sure she did. Women's rights. It's always good to have uh, a female doctor on, on call. You never know what might happen otherwise. Thank you. And he walks off behind the stage. Yeah, I tell you what, he will bring you closer this, to God. You'll go and meet him. Is, He'll be meeting him in ten minutes if you're not careful. <laughs> this guy is rapidly rising up my list of most hated <laughs> NPCs. <laughs> and he's still below that he's nine-year-old awful, kid. He's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's still below still right the, the nine-year-old. <laughs> um, so for a moment... Uh, the two of you are there, and then I'll cut back to Jack in a in a second. I definitely I definitely say what I said about um, meeting meeting God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm just muttering to myself, saying um, radiation may do some good, causing growth. And the man's a doctor. Well, I hope I don't get sick in this town. I don't want to be treated by some kind of quack. I look after myself, thank you very much. The only growth we're going to be leaving with tumours, tumours all over our body. Well, quiet. Jesus Christ, what have we got ourselves into here? What is this? Uh, Crazy town. I've been to some crazy towns, let me tell you. I've been to crazy towns. I've been to a town where they... they, um, they They all kept the women indoors all the time. Women weren't allowed out. That was a religious thing as well, I think. But this is even this is even more whack. Hey, listen, I, I was born in Jacksonville, Florida. I, 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 I know crazy. Where are the kids? There's no kids in this town. Ain't that strange? And as as you say, no kids in this town. Isn't that strange? Have we seen a we'll single lady? Have we seen a single lady? Have we seen a single lady or a married lady, for that matter? <laughs> <laughs> as, as Ed sort of stands there twisting his palm around saying all the single ladies um, yeah. and sort of working himself into a Beyonce style uh, dance off um, Jack uh, you, you you go past a couple of these tents and you see a very small sort of it's basically a porter cabin it's like a little outdoor thing um, you, you've seen them before you know that's where the toilet is and you go in and you I assume make your ablutions. You sort of you do feel quite sick, so I imagine you 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 are a bit sick, like you physically. I mean, I, I would open the door and check to see whether instantly going into a porter cabin is going to make me vomit anyway. Sure. Um, is it is it acceptable? Yeah, it's like sawdust, and like it actually smells a bit herby and fresh cut sawdust. It isn't. It doesn't seem like a sort of Glastonbury toilet. Perfect. <laughs> With a degree of relief, I will I will vomit into the uh, into the into the bowl. Yeah. Um, and can you do me a listen roll? Uh, with a penalty for vomiting at the same time or after vomiting? No, as in as you're sort of... Your, your ears are popped slightly from the vomiting, but um, let's forget the penalty. Just In the afterglow. Yeah. In the afterglow, in the afterglow yeah. Just beautiful description. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Daniel. Oh. Really, you're a poet. <laughs> in that oh. sort of... Um, you, you really are. You really are. That, that semi-euphoric moment where that you have the adrenaline still pumping, but, but you don't feel na- nauseated anymore. That's it. <laughs> in a way, it's the it's the best you ever feel. Yeah. It's that single mouthful of yeah. eggs and and bacon that that I nearly got in my mouth before the table was thrown yeah. over, and the fork went out of my hand. So just got I've got I've got the whiff of that, a bottle of peach before me. Whatever it was, I had the shit out of the bar. Yeah, I don't know. it's not a good mix, basically. It's, I mean, I barely got anything in me. Breakfast of Champions. <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Oh. 
quite a lot of luck. Is it quite a lot of luck? I think I'm going to spend five luck. It's not that much luck. Five's all right. Well, right. yeah, but I d- I'm being influenced by Wheeler here. The Wheeler, the Wheeler ploy is working on me. I'm going to do it. Ploy. I'm going to do it because I've got I've got really nervous. So I'm going to spend five luck to just pass. Well, thirty five. As you 30, sort of what else is it for? finish the afterglow and you sort of step up and you mop your. I think with your sleeve, there's not really any paper, so you sort of mop your mouth with your sleeve, and you you push the door to open a crack, and you're right next to the sort of. Uh, Remember, there was like three or four like bigger tents, and there was a smaller, slightly more pinned down white tent, which is right next to the John. And you hear this sort of uh, <clears throat> this straining sound um, from over there. It sounds like someone in a great deal of pain. Not someone else defecating because they couldn't. Get no. The job. Well, they could be. To be fair, they might have tried to wait and then run back into the tent. (laughs) I I mean, I was always... Believe it or not, guys, I was always going to try and do this whole trip out to the John so I could have a look thing. That's why I downed the peach tea. Wasn't expecting to be sick, which I'm a bit nervous about, but... Yeah. Hell, I'm out here anyway, so my plan is still kind of basically working. And I I take a nervous glance back up at where I know my two colleagues slash hopeful friends might be. Yeah. And, uh... And then I just... I think I just sneak over. Do I stealth over? I think I'm just going to walk over as if I'm, you know, doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you get to the edge of this uh, this sort of linen tent. And as you sort of reach the edge of it, you do hear this sort of... Uh, <sighs> this heavy breathing and this sort of... <sighs> this sort of straining sound. But this one's um, pinned down. And so there's... Yeah, it's this one, like, like the sides aren't flapping as much in the wind. I can't just look underneath. No, you can maybe, like, pull the sort of sheets yeah, apart. I'm going to look. But it would be a more obvious movement than... I'm going to look for an opening, see if there is any kind of... Yeah. There is, on the side, there is... Um, it's where two sheets are there. They're both pinned into the ground, but you could... You get the impression you could sort of pull them apart and, you know, stick your face through. I think I take a cigarette... I take a cigarette out... From my, because I've got them in my rolled up sleeve. I've got my cigarettes, so I take the cigarettes out and I, and I light it, put them back in my sleeve, and I look around as if I'm admiring the landscape. Great. All clear. All clear, as far as you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> there aren't three trucks with guys with farm implements driving up, and fourteen arms. Hockey masks and chainsaws. Not that you can see. I'm not saying they're not there, but you can't see them. Yeah, sure, sure. No, I'll take that, GM. I'll take that. That's kind of you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that is generous. Um, and then I think I'll, you know, lowering the cigarette down, I'll just have a little peek. Yeah. Great. So you, you, you have a little peek. Just as you exhale, you sort of stick your head through it. And for a moment, it takes a moment for your uh, eyesight to adjust, you know, from the bright heat into the... What is essentially darkness, although it's sort of glowing through from the the white sheets, and what you see on the floor seems to be um, a cross between like I had to describe it, sort of somewhere between a tumor and a hairball, um, and it's writhing on the floor, and you can see it's been spat up, right? Bits of it's bigger than that. Oh. It's the size of a person. Oh. Oh. And oh. It has, uh, it has, you can see bits of white cloth sort of enfolding in its, um, folds and being recapitulated. And, uh, yeah, it, um, oh. it is making this sound, this sort of guttural sound of pain, this. <laughs>
dilemma. Asshole. Now what?